When God blesses you, it's not just for you, it's for other people too. And I need you to remember that and let that sit in your spirit because this topic we're discussing today may make some of you feel some kind of way. It may turn you off and you may be looking at the title and saying, this sounds absolutely ridiculous, but no, this is real. This happens. And I'm going to explain to you why God would allow you to meet the right man when it's not the wrong time. Now, I did a previous video discussing the issue of right guy, wrong time and breaking down some of the dynamics of it, right? And you can go check that out when you have a chance. But I mentioned in there that there's, there's a purpose behind it from a spiritual perspective. And I promised I would do this video. So now, let me say this before I continue. Take a deep breath. <laughs> Listen with an open mind. Listen with an open spirit. And pray about all the things you're about to hear. Don't just react to it. Don't let it trigger you. Don't let it be, don't let it frustrate you because some of it may sound very frustrating, but let God guide you through how to receive this. All right. So again, I've talked about the fact that yes, you can meet the right person at the wrong time because the reality is that as human beings, we have flaws. We have issues that need to be addressed. And sometimes we cross paths at a time that it's not time for us to move forward in a romantic relationship. Now, many people will say, well, why would God even allow you to cross paths with this person if, it's, if, if nothing's supposed to come about it and awaken this love in me? Well, understand this. Just because we cross paths doesn't mean get in a relationship. Doesn't mean get romantic. It doesn't mean move forward under your own understanding. There's a deeper purpose and one deeper purpose for it is to show you that the blessing even exists. All right. So what do I mean by that? Think about this analogy. Think about if you had a child and your child has been asking you, let's say they're 13. I don't know. And they've been asking you for a car. They want a car so bad, but clearly at 13, it ain't time for a car. All right. They're not even old enough to drive. They still need to develop maturity and skills, but they always ask you for a car and you are telling them like, listen, I plan to get you a car. You just have to wait and do your part, right? In time, as a child does, as a human does, we get impatient. They constantly ask for the car, constantly ask for the car. And let's just say you already had plans to pass them down the car that's been in, in, in the garage this whole time, or maybe a family member's car, whatever. There was a car, you already have it. They don't know, but you're going to pass this down. And then one day they start to show, act like they're giving up on the idea that you're ever going to give them a car. Mind you, they still haven't done their part. So let's just say they're 16 and they haven't even taken the test yet. They have not gotten their license, but they're so fixated on the car that they want rather than the work they have to do to get ready and be prepared to have this car, take care of this car and do right by the car. But you, as a loving parent, you, you see them getting discouraged. You see them getting down on their luck and you say, you know what? Come here. Let me show you something. And you bring them around back and you say, here is the car. I have the car for you. I plan on giving you a car like I told you I would, but I need you to get back to focusing on doing your part, learning how to drive, taking that test, passing it, showing me you're responsible, and then I will give you the keys. This can happen with relationships as well. Sometimes God shows you the blessing to show you it exists because he wants you to not Continue down this path of being discouraged and losing hope, which then leads you into involving or engaging in things you should not be engaged in, which leads you to maybe even dis disconnecting from God. Because, hey, let's be real. Some people get so frustrated when that blessing doesn't come that they're like, F God, I'm done with this. I'm done believing. I'm done having faith. Nothing's working. And sometimes, again, it doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes God will step in and say, okay, I, I, I got to, this one's a little more hard headed. <laughs> I'm going to have to show them something to make sure I keep them in check. Right. But then the problem is, and I'll go back to the analogy I was given. You show the child the car, 
You tell them I still got to take the test, and they're like, let me drive it right now. Let, let me just take it around the block. <laughs> now they want to jump in the car before they're supposed to. Now in this analogy, the parent doesn't give them the keys. The kid waits till the parent leaves the house, grabs the keys, and tries to take the car around the block. And what does the kid do? Crash the car. Crash the car. And now is mad and upset and all these things, and things go left. And now, yes, when the parent comes home, they're like, oh, okay, so this is what you want to do? You've done delayed the process now. You can still end up getting your car, but now you're going to have to do a little bit more to fix what you just, what you just did wrong. All right. And make some corrective behaviors. And so, again, going back to how this applies to relationships, that's what happens. We see the car. We see this person who we have this connection with that we're feeling that we're all into. And rather than waiting for God to give us the keys and say, this is time. We want to test drive the car. We want to jump in and get it, get, have that joy ride. Not that type of joy ride. Get your mind out the gutter. <laughs> So you want to go ahead and engage when you should not be engaging and then you crash the car. The relationship crashes. But when it comes to relationships, the habit of the individual is to say, well, this must mean this was never for me. This must mean, uh, uh, you know, either, uh, you know, something God did wrong or this wasn't meant to be or whatever. And it's like, no, you got ahead of yourself. And listen, it happens to the best of us. It happens to a lot of people. So I don't want you to beat yourself up and get down about it, but I want you to understand what's going on. But even if you jumped into that relationship when you weren't supposed to, it ain't over until God says it's over. And what I mean it ain't over, meaning the the prospect of this whole situation working out at some point in time down the line is not off the table unless God says so. So the lesson you have to learn from jumping ahead when you see your blessing before it's time and, and, and going forward when you shouldn't have is to say, okay, I, I let my own desires guide me. And now this time I'm going to make sure I let God guide me. And that way you will set yourself up for success. Okay, so now let's get to the second reason why God would allow you to meet the right man, but at the wrong time. And that is to wake you up. So in example number one, it, it was a, a level of waking you up, but I wanted to focus on the fact of him showing you it exists, making sure you don't you know, get too discouraged or whatever. But again, it's not about time. And let me also add this. There's a purpose in you meeting that person as far as maybe it's supposed to trigger some other things that happen first. But again, it doesn't mean move forward in a relationship. And so that kind of what leads into waking you up. Meaning, listen, you know, the reality is that a lot of people don't start striving to be better until there's a certain level of motivation in front of them. It's kind of like, you know, how people will dangle, the, the people want to lose weight and they start running, they dangle the carrot or the cupcake or whatever in front of them. And they got to chase after it, right? That's their motivation to catch that, that candy or whatever. And so for a lot of people, when we don't feel like that great love exists, when we don't feel like that greater life and, and that greater blessing exists, we can get lackadaisical. We can lose motivation. And we can, again, stray off the path of strengthening our relationship with God because though we love God and we have God in our life, we're not trusting truly that he will bring us better. We may be saying it with our words, but we're not showing it with our actions and our obedience. So by what happens with a lot of people when they meet this love of their life, this person they have a connection with, this person that who is the right person, right? One, that connection awakens something in your spirit. So one, it allows you to even understand that this type of connection, this type of experience actually is real. So that's one thing. It wakes you up to the reality of what this real higher level of love or connection is, all right? which I'll explain a little bit later how that ends up playing a huge role or can play a huge role in how you move forward from there. But then also, when we find that kind of thing, relationship, or even if it's a job that we really want, 
What tends to happen when someone really wants something so bad, they try to make it work? They pray. They pray for their life. God, please bring this in my life. God, please make this work. It, in essence, draws them more to God. Now, the problem is, for many people, that drawing to God remains superficial. It stops at the, God, please make this work. Lord, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. But what God is trying to do is reel you in closer. Like, yo, don't, don't just ask me to make it work. Ask me how to make this work. Ask me what you need to be doing here. Because in that process, I will be able to strengthen you in ways you cannot imagine. I will be able to grow you in ways you do not understand. And yes, we could say that it shouldn't take love or relationship for that to happen, but we're human. We're human. And, and the fact of the matter is, until we see that carrot, that cupcake, whatever, that we really like, that we want, sometimes we just don't get the kick in the pants we need. And so seeing the blessing of the person who's the right person, the right man for you, it's, it's a wake-up call. And it can lead you to bigger things in a lot of various ways. But again, it's important that you focus in on, okay, well, what, what do I need to do from here? All right, so let's continue this, um, <clears throat> move things along. So as we talked about, um, showing the blessing exists, waking you up. And the third thing, which I've already alluded to, but we're going to get a little deeper into, is that because God's trying to show you there's still more work to be done. All right. So here's the thing. <clears throat> for some people, for a lot of people, I want to say for most people, it's very easy to fall into the trap of thinking you got it all together. It's very easy. And I guess it is a trap. All right. Because when you think you got it all together, that's where growth stops. All right. That's where evolution stops. And we're supposed to consistently be trying to grow and become better. All right. We will never be perfect. So I don't, I don't expect to be perfect. God doesn't expect to be perfect, but we should be striving for progress in our life. There's always areas that we can address, but it's very easy for people to fall into. Ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm amazing. I'm awesome. What's wrong with these other people? <laughs> All right? well, and, and for the ladies out there, what's wrong with these men? These men can't get it together. And you're not realizing, no, there's more on your end that needs to happen. So to give you a story, and I'm going to use me as an example, I remember this was a very long time ago. Before I became Stefan Speaks, um, I had a situation with a woman I had some feelings for, whatever. And the whole situation, we're not going to get into the whole situation, but it was a mess, all right? It was a mess. And, but I felt like, like God wanted me to deal with this person, you know, and I was praying, I was trying to be obedient, uh, but again, I didn't understand completely how to put my full trust in God and, and letting him guide me and not letting other people's outside noise and perceptions contaminate me or letting my fears contaminate me. Anyways, the, one of my uh, female friends, she had said to me one day, we were on the phone and she said, you know, I think things haven't been working out because you don't know yourself. And my response was like, how, how dare you? <laughs> like, what? I don't know myself. What do you mean? I'm awesome. I'm freaking amazing. There's nothing wrong with me. No, she got issues. And every other women out here got issues. There ain't nothing wrong with me. And she's like, listen, I'm just telling you, I think you don't completely know yourself. And so despite being offended, <laughs> later on that night, I'm always someone that if you challenge me, and like that, I will do like some, some self-reflection. I won't just let it go over my head. I may at that very moment, but I'm going to take a step back at some point and be like, okay, let me process what this person said. There's a reason for it. And so I did that night and I remember praying and all I can tell y'all is so that night when I prayed, I was like, God, all right, maybe there's some things I don't know and I haven't learned and I need to get better at. So I'm just going to surrender in the sense of I'm open to whatever you got to teach me. I'm going to humble myself because clearly I was thinking too highly of myself. Let me humble myself for whatever you got to show me. And I can tell you the months after that prayer, I, I grew leaps and bounds. 
there was so much my eyes then were opened up to. There was so much I was able to receive because also here's the thing. Sometimes the lessons have been around us the whole time, but we're blind to it because again, we think we're all, we, we're great. We think we got it together. And if we would just humble ourselves for a second, we would be able to see more clearly what's been trying to teach us something and receive those teachings, right? And that's what started to happen. And so I became a much better man than I thought I could be just in a matter of months. And again, and since then, it's just been even more. So all that to say, don't get beside yourself and think, again, there's nothing wrong with being confident. You should be confident. You should love yourself. But you should always remain humble enough to understand, I always have something to learn. I can always be better. I'm not all that. <laughs> You're a whole lot of that. All right. You can be a whole lot of that. But all that, no, because no one's perfect. And I think that, again, what also happens now when God allows you to meet that right man but the wrong time, it just starts to pull out the imperfections. So what happens in situations where we experience that connection, we experience that level of vulnerability, the, our, our deeper insecurities start to come out to the surface. The things that we hid from the world, maybe even from ourselves, start to get exposed because this level of vulnerability just, it leaves us emotionally naked, so to speak, all right? And so what happens to a lot of people is because they have not healed, they cannot handle that level of vulnerability, that level of nakedness, and they run from the situation, which is why many cases of two people who should be together not ending up together was due to fear, either crippling one or both, all right? But let me make something real clear that hit my spirit just now. Because some of you might be thinking, yeah, that's exactly what happened to him. He was scared. He wasn't ready. Listen, if he's not ready, that means there's still work on your end that needs to be done. There is no scenario that I have ever seen where two people who have a connection weren't able to make it right or the timing was off. And it wasn't a matter of both of them had areas they needed to grow in because the other. So to, to kind of wrap up that point, but I'm going to add a little bit more to it. So, again, meeting that person is going to pull out so many more things out of you that you may not even realize exist. And the thing is not to be afraid of it, not to to dismiss it, not to act like it's not a big deal. No, it's to look at yourself dead in the mirror and say, OK, this is an issue. I need to fix this because here's the thing. If, if you're if you're wanting God's blessing and God to put you in a relationship that's truly best for you. Remember what I said in the beginning. God blesses you not just for you, but for other people, too. So that means your relationship has to be an example of what God brings together. See, all these people talking about what God brought together, let no man tear apart. Well, there's a lot of people married even that God had nothing to do with that. Those are those two people deciding to get together. Those, those two people deciding to, to overlook what their spirit was telling them, to not even consult with God. I always say, every time I've coached a divorced person, man or woman, and I ask them, did you ask God if you should marry this person? 90% of the time, they say they never asked. The other 10% said they asked, God told them no, and they married that person anyway. All right? So you got to understand, one, of course, leaning on God's direction for this, but realizing that, again, like I said, people letting fear and all these other outside factors get in the way. And you got to be willing to look at yourself in the mirror and make the necessary corrections. That's it. That's the bottom line because you cannot get caught up thinking you're okay. So yes, if the timing is off, it's not just him. It's the both of you that have things to address. All right. And here's the last thing I'm going to say. And it kind of ties into as, as far as this specific point. And it ties into God wants you to be a proper representation of what he brought together. The, the, it's, it's all in the details. And so what I mean by that is sometimes the littlest thing that you don't think is a big deal, even for you, let's say it's an issue that you have. Let's say, for example, you're a woman and every now and then you get real snappy. <laughs> all right. You get a little slick in the mouth. Okay. 
And let's say you grew up in a household where this was very common practice. Let's say you have a mother who she talks all kinds of crazy to her, her, your father or the man she's with right now. And you become accustomed to this style and think it's okay. But you don't understand that that same smart little moth you got <laughs> is going to destroy, destroy your future relationship, especially the man you have a connection with because he will be more sensitive to your words. He will be more sensitive to your actions. And so if you don't wake up to the reality that this is a problem, you will carry that into the situation and you will end up sabotaging it. But that's just one example. It could be various little small things. God knows what little small details need to be cleaned up before you can move forward. And so you have to embrace the mentality of, all right, there must be more work to do. Let me get on it. All right. So before I get to the fourth reason, real quick, get your copy of The Man God Has For You, best-selling book, thousands of reviews on Amazon, on my website, you're going to love it. It's going to break a lot of things down for you. It's helping women everywhere. Click the link in the description or in the comment section and get your copy today or go to www.themangodhasforyou.com. So on to number four, and I've kind of been conflicted about if I wanted to make this number four or save it for last, but I'm just going to trust my spirit. So, because I think the, the next one is going to be a doozy. So, all right, number four, the fourth reason why God would allow you to meet the right man at the wrong time is for the purpose of building your faith and providing a testimony. So let's start with faith. Remember, faith is believing in the things unseen. You can't grow your faith without it being tested. Unfortunately, I wish, <laughs> I wish we could, right? Because Lord knows the test I've been put through to have to grow faith. And the test many of you have been put through is like, my goodness, right? But that's really the only way. We have to be put through situations where we think sometimes our hope is lost. And then God swoops in and saves the day. We, we got to be put in situations where it doesn't make any sense. Because if it made sense... We wouldn't give it to faith in God. We would just give it to what logically happens here. We might give it to our own understanding and approach to things, right? It has to go against the grain for it to really dig into that faith that's like, man, like I've seen things that y'all just can't understand. And that's why I believe what I believe. But so in doing that and allowing you to meet that right man when it's the wrong time, like if you found stories where... Uh, people have experienced this and later on went on to actually end up together and everything worked out. You will find faith <laughs> in that. You will find growth. Like there's some things that really had to occur in a lot of situations because that kind of dynamic, it puts you through it. I'm not going to lie to you. And that's why I said earlier, some of these things ain't going to feel good. You're not going to like hearing it, but it's real. It's real. And so you know, th there's the faith and then there's the testimony. So again, like I said earlier, the blessing isn't just for use for others too. God's able to grow his impact when others can testify what he's done for them. When others can walk in the example that he wants them to be. When others can show the fruits of what happened when you trust God, walk with God, you know what I'm saying? And all these different things. And so again, these types of situations, so look at it like this. If, if your parents uh, introduce you to somebody and y'all got married or whatever, I'm not saying nobody's thanking God in that scenario, but again, it's very easy to give glory to, well, my parents made it happen. You know what I'm saying? And it's not saying that people don't play a role in, in you coming together with someone. But I think that sometimes God likes to set things up in a way where it's like you can only give him the glory. It's only going to be on him. Nobody else can take credit. And that's that's, again, where it gets harder because you have these situations and you'll hear these testimonies of people who end up together where everyone on the outside was like, I don't see this working out. Or and when I say I don't see this working out, not because cause I want to be very clear. Not I don't see this working out because this is a toxic situation this is unhealthy. 
there's a bunch of messiness in that in, in regards to how you two interact with each other. It's typically, I don't see it's working out due to circumstantial. Like, that's one of the big things when you when we're talking about connection versus not a connection. Connection, when two people have a connection, it's like when they're together, everything, it just, it goes. And when they struggle to be together, it's due to all these outside factors. It's not really about they don't get along. You see what I'm saying? It's not about they're not on the same page. It's about maybe... Again, one is afraid, it's distance, it's family input, it's all these different other things. But when they're together, it's like the rest of the world don't even matter. You know what I'm saying? It's just a different vibe. Whereas you have other people who y'all can't even get along. Y'all can't even talk. Y- 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 y'all have more bad times than good times. You can't have that and then come to me and say, well, I have a connection with them. No, you got an attachment. That's an attachment. You know what I'm saying? Because the issues... Stem from how, I don't know why my voice kind of <laughs> cracked just there. The issues stem from how you two come together and seem to clash for various reasons. Connection doesn't really have that outside of when things start to go left because of the fear and outside influences. That's different. Anyways, to get back to the point, um, it's all about faith and testimony. And these types of scenarios provide a ton of it, a ton of it. And what's going to happen is when you're able for every person who's able to get through theirs, now they're going to be able to talk to the next person who might be going through it too. You're you're like, like one thing you'll notice in life. And I've seen it all the time is that sometimes we start to think we're the only ones going through certain things. And then when we share our story, share our testimony, we end up finding out how so many other people are going through the exact same thing. And by sharing the testimony, so many other people are impacted in a way that you cannot even imagine. So that's the power of it. And that's how the blessing now can spread in a way that that just has such a beautiful, powerful impact on others, brings them closer to God and brings them closer to their own blessing. All right. So now the fifth reason, and I think this is the one that people might have an even harder time with, but let me break it down for you. The fifth reason why God would allow you to meet the right man at the wrong time is that you won't stray too far from the path. So what I mean by that, I mean that in a couple ways. Um, And let's focus on the main way that I really feel in my heart I have to speak on. The reality is that when you meet someone you have a connection with, it sets the bar in your life. And it's very difficult for someone to come behind that and and beat that bar. I'm not saying it's never happened. I'm just saying it's very difficult. And so if you did not experience that bar, it is a lot more likely for you to end up in the wrong relationship. Now, listen, some people still end up in the wrong relationship, but it then makes it harder for them to stay there. You see, it makes it hard for people to go off the path and stay off the wrong path because now you sense the difference. You you now know. It's almost like, like if you've never been treated well, you don't know what that feels like. So it's very easy to then tolerate or accept bad treatment. Once you've been treated great, it makes it so much easier to see the bad treatment for what it is or anything that falls short of really good treatment. So once you experience connection like that, it makes it easier for you to see when something's missing between you and someone. Now, the unfortunate reality is, as I said, many people still move forward. This is why I say I am a firm believer that most people are not married to the person they have the most feelings for, all right? It's an unfortunate reality, but it's a reality nonetheless. Now, I don't want every married person watching this to look at their partner and thinking, wait a minute. (laughs) I'm not saying that. I don't know. I don't know. But it does happen, and it happens a lot, and I would argue most cases it happens. But um, as I said, and some people will stay there for a very long time or just way longer than they should. Others, again, it becomes so difficult. Especially what happens in a lot of scenarios is when people will move on to this new person and at somewhere down the line, they cross paths again with the person they have the actual connection with. 
and it just stirs up so much in them. Like I know there's some of you watching this that that's, that point right there will resonate very highly because you've gone through it. And it can really it can really throw your world in just in a spiral. You know what I'm saying? And so again, some people will fight through that and still try to remain because now other factors come into play. Like I, I'm a firm believer that the connection always comes back around. The question becomes, what have you done in the meantime to either set yourself up to be able to now come together or make things worse and harder? So example, people, they don't end up with the person they really want to be with, they had a connection with for whatever various reasons. They move on, they go get with someone else because again, people still want to have someone there or they may be hoping that getting with someone else helps them forget about the old person, various reasons. Anyways, now you're in this new relationship. Maybe you even get married. Maybe you even have kids. So now when the new connection, when the connection that you had comes back around, you still feel the same feelings. You still feel stronger for them than you do for your current partner. But now the dynamic is harder because you are not only dealing with whatever fears and concerns you had before, but now you're married. Now you got kids and now you're like, I can't do this, but there's a party that wants to do it. Now, I'm not here to tell you to go leave your partner right there and go get with this person. I'm just explaining to you how a lot of people put themselves in a position to not be able to see the fruition of this situation. But I do believe that... And remember this, God cannot control our free will. So when he allows us to meet this person in advance, it's not to say, because as I'm giving you examples, it's not to say it's a guarantee to make sure that person doesn't go down the wrong path, but it can increase the chances. At least it, it, it hedges the bet a little bit more. All right. And that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to influence like, all right, hopefully they see the blessing. They know it's there. They feel this experience. And that will at least give them, give them second thought before they move on to this, that, and the other. And so it's also not straying too far off the path when it comes to God, because when God has put something in your spirit and you know, and again, and I want to say, when I say put something in your spirit, because there's a lot of people who come to conclusions about what God is telling them rather than praying, asking, and listening within their spirit. Now, listen, I'm in, I cannot verify when someone's being genuine about hearing something from God. I can only give them the benefit of the doubt. But I do know that from sitting down from people, sometimes it's a matter of them putting their own puzzle pieces together and saying, well, this must mean God is telling me this because this happened and that and this and that. But it wasn't them actually sitting down, pulling back, detaching from the world, pray, when I say detaching, it could be like fasting, pray and just hearing what God has to tell them within their spirit, not come to an assumption, but asking very specific questions. Is this the person for me? How do I move forward? What do you want me to do here? What do I need to work on? These types of questions that allow you to receive an answer that you can now put into action. All right. And so with that said, uh, again, the reason why it happens, like I said, one of the reasons is that, that you will stay connected to seeking God because when it's in your spirit like that, genuinely, it's almost like it, it tugs at you every now and then. Little things happen here and there and it's kind of God reminding you like, listen, stop stop getting distracted by all this other stuff. Come back to me. Let's, let me tell you what you need to do. You know what I'm saying? And again, it's easier said than done. That's why I mentioned that this one might be tough for people to swallow because the reality is that when things aren't looking right, when this person you want to be with or have a connection with isn't do, wanting the same right now for whatever reason, when everything seems like hope is lost, it's hard to not just go do your own thing. It's hard not to just go try to find someone else to be with, you know? And though it's hard and though I know it's so tough to have to be patient and grow and, and, and work through the process. It's honestly what's best. And so I know there's, there's no easy way to say it. It just is what it is. And I just want to put it out there. And I pray that if you are going through that or will end up going through that, that this video will serve as a reminder to not just get caught up in the outside noise and just to draw closer to God and let him show you what you need to do. Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here.
and I'll see you there. But here's the thing. A lot of people, and it may be you, as I would assume, are praying for God to send that one, right? And I know we have a lot of questions about how do we even know they're the one, but I wanted to focus real quick on 